As recently as Thursday night, a home near Southeast 84th and Clinton was riddled with bullets, one of them going right through a three-year-old girl's bedroom. Fortunately, she wasn't there. The family is lucky, but the same can't be said for everybody. It's the kind of pain you don't understand unless you've been through it. I've seen the crying so deep inside. Jennifer Adams lost her brother-in-law, a father of three, to gun violence a week and a half ago. His brother-in-law, also a father, was gunned down in the same Southeast Portland shooting. Just days earlier, several vehicles and homes along Northeast Thompson were struck by gunfire. The damage you're looking at here is from one of seven shootings over a 12-hour span. You hear about this stuff and you hope it doesn't happen in your in your backyard until it does. The stuff she's referring to has been happening a lot lately. Just this month, there have been more than 90 shootings in Portland. That compares to 51 in January 2020. And speaking of 2020, we saw more than 890 shootings. To put that into context, there were 500 less shootings in 2019. Needless to say, the gun violence is out of control. There is no other way to put it. Public information officers for the Portland Police Bureau will typically address it if asked, but we figure it's about time city leaders do the same. I reached out to all four Portland City Commissioners, as well as Mayor Ted Wheeler, via email and Twitter. Among other things, I wanted to know what they think of the gun violence in Portland. Could the dismantling of the gun violence reduction team have anything to do with it? Aside from an automated email response from Dan Ryan's office and some back and forth with staffers for Mingus Maps and Joanne Hardesty, the city commissioners had nothing to say. A spokesperson for Mayor Wheeler's office directed me to the mayor's comments earlier in the week. GVRT is gone. It is dead. It is kaput. Now the question is, what replaces it and what will replace it will have more prevention focus it will have more community engagement focus, and it will have support of the community. That remains to be seen. What we do know is that those most impacted by the violence have no problem speaking up and demanding justice. Case in point, family of those two brothers-in-law. We're all heartbroken, hurt, and of course we would like witnesses to come forward. We would love to have uh, some, some justice to find out who did this and um, have them you know, have consequences for their for their actions and not have them on the street able to do that again. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News.